Crystal, what are you taking a look at? Well, learn to code. For years, this was the condescending mantra chanted at downwardly mobile workers suffering from the devastation of bad trade deals and disastrous dealings with China. The idea was that while the old middle class jobs might have been destroyed, there was a new glistening industry with plentiful, high paying jobs if you were just willing to obtain the necessary skills, i.e. coding. Now, the claim was always questionable, both from a numbers perspective. There were never enough tech, tech jobs to ultimately fill the gap. And also from a practical standpoint, not everyone wants to be a programmer and plenty of people find deep fulfillment in working with their hands or working with people. But the tech path to prosperity did seem to exist, at least now. Tech is looking a little less like a promised land and a little more like a wasteland. Overall job creation in the economy has actually remained strong with 223,000 jobs added in December that was led by growth in healthcare and in hospitality. But while jobs in those sectors were on the rise, the tech industry has been in the middle of a complete bloodbath. An independent website called layoffs.fyi tracks these tech layoffs and the numbers are really pretty stunning. Meta is cutting 11,000 jobs. Amazon is slashing 18,000 jobs. Salesforce is cutting 8,000 jobs. Cisco is cutting 4,100. Twitter is slashing 3,700. All told, more than 1,000 tech companies have laid off more than 268,000 workers. Stunning come down for a sector that was flying high, amassing unbelievable fortunes for billionaire founders just a couple years ago. And of course, it's not just in layoffs where the sector has taken a hit. Companies from Netflix to Uber to all the crypto players, they have all seen their market caps collapse in recent months. Check out this chart with the stock returns from a bunch of big tech players. You got Apple, Alphabet, Amazon, all here. The green positive bars, those are their stock returns in 2021. The red that you see there is how they fared in 2022. Every one was down about 20% or even more. Come down is being felt already in the San Francisco and Silicon Valley housing markets. I won't say that they've returned to earth, but San Francisco posted some of the biggest drops in the country last year in terms of housing prices, and they are projected to see the largest housing price declines in 2023 in the entire country. That is a big change from the breakneck pace of housing price inflation that has been the norm there for years and years and years. A clear indicator of the changing fortunes that we are witnessing in the tech sector. Now, there are two things going on here, I think. One is cyclical, and one might be with us for the long term. The first is that a lot of companies boomed during the pandemic as people stayed home, worked on Zoom, ordered Uber Eats, watched Netflix, and shopped on Amazon. CEOs like Salesforce's Mark Benioff and Meta Zuckerberg have admitted that they overhired during that time and are now dealing with the post-pandemic reality. I'm sure their heartfelt apologies are cold comfort to the workers who were hired and then summarily terminated. But the other factor here is the Fed's actions to lift interest rates. The Fed's policy of zero interest rates during the 2010s created a lot of fakeness in the economy, tech valuations that were wildly inflated, cheap cash that could be used to finance unprofitable companies. This easy money financed a lot of tech industry bloat and an irrational expectation that everything in the stock market would always just go up. The Fed is now trying to let the air out of the bubble that they themselves created. Of course, their one tool of hiking interest rates is bound to create massive pain for ordinary people who do not deserve to be collateral damage from a recession caused by the cleanup of elite failures. Now, what does all of this mean for the country and for our workforce? Well, one welcome development is it has already taken a massive bite out of the fortunes of many tech billionaires. Elon Musk's net worth took a historic hit last year, but Bezos, Zuckerberg, and other tech billionaires suffered inconceivably large losses as well. Don't worry, though, their net worths continue to be inconceivably large, so they will be just fine. Where the blow is going to be felt the hardest is in the upper middle class, which has really been built and seen its fortunes separate from the lower middle class on the backs of tech job growth. And it is this segment of society that much of our entire economy has been built around pleasing. Hospitality, service, and retail sectors, they have all been designed to cater to the tastes and interests of this affluent, but not quite rich, group. That a blow to their fortunes could have big cultural and economic implications. Could be a huge psychological impact here as well. For a long time, a major dividing line in the workforce has been those who are catered to, treated as human beings, and those who are just treated as basically interchangeable meat sacks by corporate bosses. Well, now the tables are kind of turned. Retail and service sector workers, they're in huge demand. Tech workers, meanwhile, are facing unemployment. 
And Mark Benioff might be very deeply sorry that he has to lay you off, but ultimately, when market conditions changed, tech industry workers were just as likely to be treated as interchangeable meat sacks as their blue collar and service sector brothers and sisters. Not a single wage earner is protected from the whims of the market and their bosses. So suddenly worker rights and protections that white collar workers kind of took for granted, those might seem a little bit more relevant than they did just a year earlier. And finally, while well, I expect tech to rebound and to, of course, continue to be a really important part of the U.S. economy for the foreseeable future, those who offer the industry as a panacea for the woes of the American worker have now been thoroughly repudiated. Some jobs of the future will be in tech, but plenty more are going to be in healthcare, retail, service, and hopefully a new reshoring movement and green energy movement that will bring back an American industrial base. Making all of those jobs good jobs with living wages, with health care, with worker protections, that is a much better answer for workers than learn to code ever was. And Sagar, this is one of the stories that I kind of have my eye on for 2020. Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now. And Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us. And if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.